folks. Today we're going to go ahead and install the two uh, inch cases together. We're going to use the little paintbrush, my favorite paintbrush, to apply the case sealant to both halves of the two crankcases. Uh, this is the same sealant that I used previous to install the uh, crankshaft into the uh, left engine case. I'm going to apply it to all of the joints as you can see me pointing to here and uh, nice thin even coating on both halves. I will preheat the sealant just like it did before to about 125, 130 degrees or so just to soften it down a little bit. And I will also gently heat the engine cases um, where I'm pointing with my fingers there all the way around to create a warm, um, to warm the cases so that when I apply the sealant it will flow out nice and smooth. I'm not going to show you the little chart I made when I removed the original screws from the cases. I took the engine apart about six months or, or more ago now. You can see here I, I made this little uh, cardboard template and as I removed the screws I measured them and uh, labeled here were uh, the sizes so that I knew the length of each individual screw. That 60 millimeter I was just pointing to there, I had to drill that one out so the head is missing. Uh, I typically don't reuse screws. You can see the 80 millimeter in the lower left hand side there that I just extracted. I am going to reuse that screw because I don't have any 80 millimeter GIS screws, so I'm going to clean that one up and reuse it, but typically I don't reuse case screws. Uh, you can see I have the new fasteners laid out at the top along with the torque wrench which is set to slightly less than 5 foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. I set around 55 inch pounds. Uh, I usually go a little bit less than the recommended torque when I use uh, uh, lubricant on the threads. I'll be using anti-seize on these screws so I reduce the torque accordingly. Your 3 Bond 1104, uh, same, same material I used before. Uh, it's been warmed in the oven and I'll use uh, one of my favorite little paint brushes here to apply it uh, all the way around the uh, both engine cases, including around the crankshaft um, mounting there uh, that you can see the circle. So I'm not going to show all of this besides uh, you're going to see my head in part of this, but uh, the process is the same using the paintbrush and uh, applying a nice even amount all the way around. Here's a little better view with my head out of the way. Again, you can just see me evenly applying it to where the two case halves will eventually meet together. There's no need to hurry here. This is not an adhesive. It doesn't really have within reason an open time. Um, you won't want to allow it to set for, for hours and hours open, but uh, you can take your time at this stage and uh, make sure you get it right uh, before you put the cases together. So I'm now just going to work my way around and we'll come back here when it's, uh, when it's applied and we're ready to put the cases together. that the sealant is applied to both case halves. I once again warmed the cases gently with a hot air gun as well as the bearings in the left, I'm sorry, the right case that I'm pointing to there. Heated those bearings up good and hot to expand them and now I'm going to check to make sure that the crankshaft is, the right crankshaft is aligned vertically so there's no chance of pinching when I put the two cases together. Now it's a matter of aligning the two cases. I've got three things to bring in alignment. That is the shift drum, the output shaft, and the crankshaft. And that's what you see me doing here. Uh, just you do it visually, get them aligned up. There are two dowel pins in the lower left crank uh, case half that also help with alignment. You can see me tapping it down by hands. I'll take the 
brass hammer and just gently tap it. You'll also notice here that the output shaft bearing in the middle popped out of its boss. That is not unusual. Um, there is a retainer. There you see it just popped. There is a retainer that eventually will prevent that from happening when the engine's in use. Now I will take the block of wood and just make sure it's snugged up nice and tight. It dropped in place reasonably easy. In this case, sometimes they're a little tougher than others. This wasn't bad in this case, so I'll just snug it down. And uh, now I'm going to tap the bearing back into place, which slid right down uh, where it needed to be quite easily. Just make sure everything's down nice and tight and there's nothing that's uh, binding or pinching. Coming up here in a moment, um, I'll be checking the shafts to make sure everything is free. That's the output shaft, the crankshaft, and the connecting rod is not pinched. And uh, making sure that center block is down all the way. Didn't slide up on me, and I don't believe it did if I recall. Um, everything looked pretty good at this stage. Step now is to turn the case, the entire engine, lower engine case unit around and over because the screws case screws go in from the left side. You'll notice there also that I had off camera added the bolt that goes in the end of the shift drum. Again for reference here's the little diagram of the screws and how they they go in by size. Next thing is uh, I will be applying uh, anises to the screws before I insert them and again I will back off on the torque setting by about five or so inch pounds to compensate for the anti-seize that will be used. Anti-seize is only applied to about all the last quarter to maybe three-eighths of an inch of each screw. We're now ready to begin torquing the screws down. I set my torque wrench to about 30 inch pounds for the first round and we'll be using a crisscross pattern since there is no prescribed torquing sequence for this engine. So I'll begin in one spot, torque all of them up to 30 inch pounds, reset the torque wrench to 55 inch pounds. Again, I'm a few pounds less than the maximum 60 for this size fastener because I have applied anti-seize to all the screws, which will uh, confuse the torque setting. And I'll work my way around evenly to the 30 inch pounds and then up to 55 and then I will go back a third time to make sure that I didn't miss any screws and they're all tightened evenly. There the engine is, it's all finished. Uh, one thing I'd like to come back to and talk a little bit more about is the torque for the fasteners. Now these are six millimeter coarse thread and uh, they're mild steel. The standard torque uh, setting for that fastener is five foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. And since I used anti-seize, I backed off on the torque a little bit because the anti-seize, as I alluded to before, will uh, actually uh, make them go in the fasteners thread a little easier than they normally would if the threads were clean and dry, as you typically would do for uh, when you're torquing uh, fasteners. So I backed off to 55 inch pounds rather than 60 to compensate. One thing I wanted to point out here is that on the end of the shift drum I had already attached that 10 millimeter bolt as you can see there but I also added a tag that says not tight. The reason being is I'm not going to torque that or tighten that yet. I'll come back to that a little bit later but I do that so that I don't forget about it. It would be real easy to get uh, further on down the line on the project and forget about that or any other bolt for that matter. So anything that uh, 
I will come back to later. I typically will put a tag on it, such as you see there, to remind myself that uh, I have some unfinished work uh, to do at a later time. The only thing left to do now is double check the crankshaft and the output shaft, the shift drum, make sure everything is still free and isn't bound up. And uh, we'll begin an upcoming video of the assembly, the continuation of the assembly of this right side of the engine, which will include the shift shaft mechanism that will attach to the shift drum, the clutch basket, and uh, primary drive, etc. So that will be coming up in the next couple of videos. We'll be wrapping up the lower end assembly on the right side anyway. And as usual, thanks for watching.